This is the story of Vault 77. We find precious little evidence of Vault 77 in the Capital Wasteland. But the biggest evidence that it even exists brings us to Paradise Falls. To gain entry, we either have to bribe the guard named Grouse or capture slaves for the man, a task which I explored in my video yesterday that you can watch here. Once inside, the first thing we see is a spray-painted sign that says, Stow your peace. I wanted to see if this was a real threat. Heading over to a nearby unnamed slaver, we can take out our gun and wave it around. You went out with Emir last week, didn't you? Catch anything good? Uh, no, it doesn't really matter if we have our piece stowed or not. He's referring to another slaver named Yimmer, but we'll meet him later. We see two paths before us. There is one building off to the east. On the roof, we see a sign that says restaurant. This must have been a pre-war restaurant at this strip mall. And off to the west, we see two buildings. The left building was called Velma's. Maybe a clothing store or another restaurant. And the one to the right was a liquor store. Gazing off to the south, we see more imposing pre-war signs, some sort of starburst sign that says paradise, and that ice cream boy that we saw in yesterday's video. We'll explore off that way a little bit later. But to learn more about Vault 77, we'll walk on over to this liquor store. We see that since the apocalypse, the slavers now use it as a barracks. Heading inside, we don't see anyone. They're all milling about outside, but it looks pretty well defended. They have a big sandbag barricade directly in front of the entrance. Moving to the south, we see a bit of a refreshment area with some scrap to the southeast, and here we find a power fist. Note that even though everything here is marked as owned, because these are slavers, we don't lose karma by stealing. We don't gain it either, but we can take anything we find here as long as we don't get caught. In the middle of the floor here on the barracks, we see a billiard table, and it looks like these guys are drinking beer, drinking whiskey, and playing a form of beer pong, only with cue balls instead of ping pong balls. I tried my hand at it. I'm supposed to hold E or press Z or something. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. But turning to the west, something catches our eye. It's blue and it looks like a vault suit. Here we find a Vault 77 jumpsuit. Lying next to the jumpsuit is a holotape that says, burn this jumpsuit. But for the holotape to make sense, we need to learn more about Vault 77 elsewhere. Leading up to the release of Fallout 3 in 2008, Bethesda reached out to the guys at Penny Arcade to create a comic set in the Fallout universe promoting the game. The comic they came up with is called One Man and a Crate of Puppets, and this comic introduces us to Vault 77. The Vault experiments were never designed to rescue the people that lived inside them. They were a vast social experiment designed to study pre-selected segments of the population, like Vault 69, where women outnumbered men by a thousand to one. Or Vault 43, which consisted of 20 men, 10 women, and one panther. But we aren't here to talk about those vaults. We're here to talk about Vault 77. Hello? One man and a crate of puppets. One hour after the vault door closes... Hey! Open up! You forgot all the other fucking people! The lone occupant of Vault 77 realizes that he's all alone. Four months go by. <laughs> it wasn't until a year, three months, and twelve days later that the lone occupant discovered a crate in the back of the vault. P-13X U.S. government issue puppet ration. After opening the crate... All right, you're a dog? I guess. Some kind of dog? And you're like a king, I guess. The puppets proved to be the man's only company. And at first, they were a simple distraction to pass the time. Wow, wow! I am the king. But only two months after discovering the crate, each puppet had developed a distinct personality. It's the king's birthday! Oh boy, did you hear that, Reverend Hound? Grandma's going to make a pie. Sometime later, the man discovered that he had accidentally left one puppet in the box. Psst, 
Hey, what? You can talk? Why are you talking? I don't know. Why are you talking? You talk to me first. He tried to integrate the new puppet into his loving community of puppets. But the new puppet didn't fit in well. The king! The king has been murdered! It's regicide! What happened here? Uh Uh-oh! Sweet lord! Dear merciful god! I need to ask you a question, and you need to be honest with me. Are you sure you want the answer? What did you do? What we did! No! You're a murderer! And you're an accomplice! I wouldn't! Uh, I couldn't! You did! Oh my god! What do we do? Reverend Hound! We leave! We leave tonight! Leaving Grandma and Reverend Hound behind for fear that they too would be murdered, the man found a way to open the door to the vault. But he stepped out into the wasteland only to discover... that the world around him had changed. This is a big decision, you know. Maybe we should sleep on it. It wasn't long before the man acclimated to his new environment. After all, it was a sight better than the vault he had come from. I expected things to be a lot worse, actually. I mean, yeah, it's a little hot for December, but I'm not really a snow person. I think we're going to be okay out here, don't you, Mr. Pinch? And he was pleased to find other survivors whom he could talk to. He was fond of sharing stories around a campfire. My vault was horrible. I mean, really bad. Just brutal. It was like being buried alive, you know? Buried alive in a big, clean house with plenty of food and water and puppets. How about you? How was your vault? Could have been better. But the wasteland had its fair share of dangers, too. Guys, you need to listen to me. You don't want to mess with this puppet. He's seriously crazy. He's killed before. What do you think? Slave or food? I don't know. I'm pretty hungry. But the puppet's murderous nature proved to be an asset in an unforgiving wasteland. Watch out! Bob's dead! He killed Bob! I got away somehow. Maybe he let me get away. Maybe, maybe he followed me. Man, get your shit together. Who killed Bob? The Puppet Man! He's here! So, Vault 77 didn't turn out so good. You've got to remember, though. The vaults were never meant to save anyone. But surely, this is just a fairy tale. Vault 77 didn't really happen like that, did it? I mean, the vault suit we find here is hard to ignore. And now that we understand the lore behind Vault 77, we can listen to the holotape burn this doggone jumpsuit. Like I told you, man, I don't fucking know where it came from, but it freaks the boys out. Some story from a while back about a stranger with no name. Just get rid of the damn thing. Ain't no good gonna come from keeping it around. Besides, if it is his, maybe he'll come back for it. Comprende? How did the puppet man lose his jumpsuit? Was he finally killed? Or did he simply change into something better? How did it find its way here to Paradise Falls? And why do these slavers appear to know the reputation of the man who once wore it? We may never know. Or perhaps he wandered west to explore the lush wilds of West Virginia. If so, maybe we'll see him again someday. Incidentally, Penny Arcade did not come up with the idea for Vault 69. Vault 69 was first mentioned in the Fallout Bible by Chris Avalon. In the Fallout Bible, we also find a reference to Vault 68, which is the exact opposite of Vault 69. Vault 68 contained 999 men and one woman. 
There is even firmer canonical proof for Vault 68 because it was mentioned in Fallout 2. However, the reference to Vault 68 was eventually cut from the game for unknown reasons, though it still exists in the game's files. Therefore, it is possible that we will find both Vault 69 and 68, and maybe even 43, the one with 20 men, 10 women, and a panther, in upcoming games. The bottom floor of the barracks doesn't have much else. Heading upstairs, we find the slavers' beds. Interestingly, none of these are set to owned, so we can sleep in any of these that we wish. We find a pre-war book inside a suitcase next to a bunk bed, and after looting scrap from some lockers, we can hop down and exit the barracks back out to Paradise Falls. Next, we'll turn right to visit Velma's, and we see that this is now a clinic. Heading inside, we don't see anyone. Moving southwest, we can loot a teddy bear on a table that we can save for little Marie. Oh, good thing she didn't catch me stealing. We find a woman covered in blood named Cutter. You're a mess. I hope you brought a lot of money with you. Cutter here is a versatile doctor that sells both chems and medicine. Let me see your chem supply. If you're planning on overdosing, just make sure you pay me first. For chems, she sells everything we want, but in low quantities. And then we can ask to see her medical supply. I've got supplies, if you've got caps. Where she sells everything we're used to, and has quite a stash of stim packs. To the left we see a table with a first aid kit on it that has okay. her shop inventory. And behind a privacy screen we see a bit of a surgery. Moving towards the door she opened, we see that this is just her bedroom. Lots of burnt books, plates, and even some ant meat on the floor. That's it for the clinic, so heading out, we can either turn left towards the restaurant or right. We'll explore to the right for now. We see that this path leads us to the town square of Paradise Falls. There's a staircase right next to us. Climbing it, we see a big pile of crap. Yeah, crap. And at the top of this platform, we find a slaver with a minigun. One wrong move, and you're going in the meat pen. He'll prove to be a bit of a nuisance later on. On top of this platform, we see that big starburst sign we saw upon entry. On the front side, it has the word paradise, and on the back side, it has the word falls. But before going on to the town square, let's head back around and explore this restaurant. The restaurant, however, is now a shop called Lock and Load. And opening the main door, we see its proprietor standing behind a counter named Pronto. You need a new shooter, chica? You need guns? I got guns. You need armor? Got that too. So long as you got the caps for them. Do you make a lot of your own stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Take it apart, put it back together. It ain't hard. Sometimes I design my own weapons too. You guys are pretty isolated. Where do you get your supplies? Well, the guys usually bring in what they grab on missions. I mean, you always got to kill a few people when you're gathering meat. You know, they've got some guards. The dad thinks he's a hero and pulls a gun, whatever. So they bring that crap in here and trade it. But mostly the only stuff I get is from these guys. And they keep the good stuff for themselves. So you pretty much get the leftovers? Yeah, pretty much. Greedy assholes. I don't know how I'm supposed to pull down a living over here when they don't trade fair. They keep the good stuff. No wonder your selection sucks. Hey, man. Rude. You don't like it? Shop somewhere else. Tough break, man. Well, let's talk about something else. Yeah, no one wants to hear me bitch about my problems. What else do you need, man? Let's see your inventory. Sure thing, hoss. If you see anything you want, let me know. And man, he wasn't kidding. This inventory is downright pathetic. A couple of baseball bats and a 10 mil pistol in his weapons inventory, low level raider armor in the apparel section, five stim packs, and seven 10 millimeter rounds. Ah, this is horrifying. However, when we ask him to repair our weapons... No problem, but I'm not gonna use any of my stock for parts. We discover he has a repair skill of 85. This is the highest repair skill I've seen in the Capital Wasteland. The only two I've found that were higher was Haley from Haley's Hardware near Point Lookout and Soma from Mothership Zeta. So it's great to take advantage of him while we can. Well, look, if the raiders aren't treating you fair, why not put a boot up their tushes and take the good stuff? Because there's only one of me, man. I know you're new here, but you piss too many people off around here and you'll have trouble on your hands. And by trouble, I mean end up in the pens or hanging from the sign out front. No thanks. But if you know of any way I could get some better stock in here, maybe we could work something out. 
It'd give me more to trade and give those animals out there more reason to open up their pockets. So what would it take for you to get some decent supplies? I'd have to have some decent supplies to trade for them. If I have more things that these douchebags want, they'll bring me better stuff to trade. But you know, I'm a one-man operation here. Not like I get out a lot. Pretty much, my business is at the mercy of assholes. Fucking free market, man. Tough crap, man. Now shut up in some of the stuff you already have. Yeah, whatever, asshole. Shut up and buy something. Oh, well, that does sound pretty rough, but hey, that's business for you. Yeah, it is. Is there anything else you need? What exactly do you need? Maybe I could bring you some stuff to trade. Yeah, I know. I could really get this little shithole going if I had some better stuff. First things first, bring me some Chinese assault rifles. People always need them for parts. Twenty should get me going. I'll trade them off and I should be able to improve my stock pretty fast. Yeah, forget that. I don't work for you. Well, whatever, man. I don't need to like you to do business with you. If you want to get something going, you know where to find me. Did you need anything else? Well, what's in it for me? Well, I can't really kick much your way right now. But once I get running, I'll be able to offer you much better stuff. And, of course, as my business partner, you'll get a discount on everything. Sounds like a good deal to me, man. All right. 20 Chinese assault rifles and we're in business. Just bring any you find back to me. Any piece of shit will do. I'm just going to be breaking them apart and trading the parts. You know where to find me. With that, we get the unmarked quest, The Economics of Violence. We need to bring this guy 20 Chinese assault rifles. Heading back to Megaton, we can grab our stash of Chinese assault rifles and bringing them back to Pronto, we can say, let's talk about those Chinese assault rifles you were looking for. Yeah, you got some? We can give them to him in any quantities we want up till 10. So in order to complete this unmarked quest, we have to give him two stacks of 10. All right, I'll just take them off your hands then. But I still need more. Come back when you have some to trade. Once we give him the final stack, that should be it. Give me a few days to spread the word around. I should be resupplied pretty quick. Thanks for your help, man. I could never have done this without you. Just for you, a 20% discount at the new and improved Lock and Load. And just like he said, if we inspect his shop inventory now, it hasn't changed. It's still really disappointing. However, coming back a few days later, I actually had to wait three days, we see that his inventory is much improved. His weapon selection is far greater. He even includes mini guns and silenced pistols. He sells combat armor, advanced radiation suits, and I even found a T-45 power armor helmet. And he sells every ammunition imaginable, except for Mesmatron ammo. That 20% discount is a huge boon for anyone needing to stock up on ammo. However, depending on the choices we make later in this series, he might not be here for long. So it's probably a good idea to stock up on ammo now. Exploring his shop here, we see a number of weapons laid out on a table that we could steal as long as his back was turned. And over in the northeastern corner, we find a skeleton in a cage. And it must have been his birthday when he was caged. We see that he's wearing a party hat. There's a workbench here. And heading behind the counter, we see a number of ammunition canisters. And he keeps his inventory in a locked locker. We'd have to get the key from him somehow. Opening the door against the eastern wall brings us to a hallway which leads to another door bringing us down into his basement. And this functions as his bedroom. We see a number of excess cages being stored down here. His bed is in the southwestern corner and we find a skeleton lying on the ground next to a bathtub and a music stand. Though she's missing a leg. Oh, there it is in the tub with a combat knife. <sighs> These slavers. But before we do anything about this, we have to play their game. With lock and load fully explored, we can head back outside. Passing the barracks and the clinic, we can head southeast to the town square. Off to the southeast, we see a ruined pre-war cinema. And standing on a balcony overlooking his kingdom is the leader of these slavers, Eulogy Jones. Eulogy Jones! He is flanked on either side by his own personal slaves. 
We'll meet him a bit later, but first, turning around, we can explore this open area. We see that it used to be a robotics parts store. We see a ruined sign that says Robco Parts, but now it appears to be a restaurant. We see a big green sign that says food. However, as we get close, we overhear a conversation. This is the last time I tell you, no more. Please, no, I didn't, I swear. This is your last mistake, little bartender. Ah, over here! <laughs> Where? <laughs> what was that all about? We can chat with this murderer named Ymir. <laughs> Hello, I am Ymir. Why did you kill that bartender? He put water in my vodka to make more caps from me. Make the drink weak. Try to charge me more. Maybe the next bartender, he won't be so stupid, huh? <laughs> where do you come from? Does it matter? It only matters where I am, and that is here. I have my boy, my friends, plenty of caps, and strong drink. Why would the past matter when now is so good? A man who lives in the present, and as such, he immediately walks over to flirt with another slaver. Red, I want to ask you something. Oh, good. I always love questions from my favorite smelly barman. I am always friendly, and yet you are always, well, kind of a bitch. Ymir, let's be honest. I'd sooner die than let you anywhere near my bunk. But feel free to send that boy of yours anytime. Ah, Red, this is why I like you. Always making jokes. <laughs> you want a drink? Honey, I'll take anything you feel like paying for. Mm. The woman who rebuffed him is Carolina Red. Why, look what we have here. Some fresh meat, right out of the waste. You just want to go ahead and jump in the pen with the others? Or should I beat you senseless and drag you there myself? Why are you so daggone mean? I ain't mean, not by a long shot. You want to see mean? You should have met my daddy. That son of a bitch had cut your legs off just to laugh at you trying to crawl away. I saw him do it once, too. Just kept laughing at this poor bastard. After an hour or so, Daddy got bored and crushed his skull with a rock. Come to think of it, that was pretty funny. Ha ha, funny. Interestingly, when she was talking with Ymir, she referred to him as a barman, I guess, because he murdered the bartender, he's now the barman? That said, if we try to interact with him, he doesn't sell us any drink. Heading around the counter, we can loot Frank's body, but we don't find anything there. As we're about to leave, we find Jotun, Ymir's son. Jotun. Is that your name? Yes, Jotun. What kind of stupid name is Jotun? Don't care what you think, what do you want? Well, it's nice to meet you, Jotun. No, it is not nice. What do you want? Okay, it's not nice. Well, what do you do around here? I keep my father safe. It is. A big job. Oh, these slavers are just dripping with personality, aren't they? But with that, we are out of time. In tomorrow's episode, we'll discover where these slavers are keeping the kidnapped children and finally confront Eulogy Jones. Eulogy Jones! I publish many videos each and every week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with a wide selection of unique shirt designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can also get them on other products as well, smartphone cases, mugs, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new episode. Squirrel and Penny, we aren't supposed to be here. We gotta get back home. You gotta help us get out of here. Can't you just shoot them all? You sure? Well, okay.